Today we're going to take a look at some questions that came up on my video about measuring voltage. The questions are from a viewer who goes by the name of Purple Crimson. And the questions are essentially, when we are looking at these questions on the board, I have a wire that goes from the battery to the resistor. That wire has resistance. I have current flowing through it. Why don't I have a voltage drop? And the second question is, as I measure my voltage around the circuit, down here I have zero volts. At that point, how can I have current flow if I have no voltage? Well, these questions come up actually fairly often, and I have answered them in other videos, but it's worth taking a special look at these just to make sure that we understand what's going on. So, when we look at these circuits on the board, we are looking at what we call an ideal circuit, and they are not real world in any way, shape, or form. So let's take a look at how these differ from the real world once we get out there. Let's start with looking at the battery. We assume that this battery is going to deliver 10 volts no matter how much current I take from it. So we assume if I take 100 amps, still have 10 volts. Well, that's not going to happen in the real world. And the reason is that this battery is more than what we draw on the board. A real world battery has built-in resistance. So that battery actually looks like this. I have a battery with some voltage, and in series with that is a resistor. Let's put just a tenth of an ohm in this case, and let's draw a dotted line around that to remind us that that is actually what's inside the battery. So what's going to happen when I take current from this? Let's get rid of this 10 ohms here just so that we can have whatever current we want. And let's assume that I'm taking one amp of current from that battery. Well, what's going to happen? We have current going through this resistance. That means there's going to be a voltage difference across it. Higher voltage where the current enters the resistance, lower voltage where the conventional current exits the resistance. How much? Ohm's law, 0.1 times 1 gives us a tenth of a volt. So by the time I get out of this battery, I've already lost a tenth of a volt, and I'm down to 9.9 .9 volts. So that's the real world situation. And indeed, this wire does have resistance. How much? A very, very tiny amount. So tiny that we usually ignore it. But in the real world, it's going to have some resistance. So let's say that from the battery to the resistor, we have a resistance of, well, I'm not going to draw the resistor in there. I think that might be confusing. But we do have a resistance in that wire, let's say 0 0.0, probably much less than that but let's make it a hundredth of an ohm just for uh, to be realistic about it. So we have a hundredth of an ohm and we have, let's make that one amp again flowing through it. So we start with 9.9 .9 volts. Now we're going to lose a hundredth of a volt. So by the time we get over to this battery, we would be down to nine point, what would it be? 9.89 .9 volts. So actually, we do lose voltage as we go over there in the real world. Now, this is actually not realistic either because unless this, battery, unless this wire is very long or very tiny, it's not going to have that much resistance. But we will have some resistance, and the more current we flow through it, the more voltage drop we will have. So that's the real world situation. Then we get over to this resistor, and we said that was 10 ohms. Well... How much voltage are we really going to have there now? Because we have 10 ohms plus 0.1 ohms plus 0 0.01 ohms. Our total resistance is now what? We add them up. They're series resistance. So it's going to be 10.11 ohms. I'm not going to do the calculations because it's really an exercise in futility. We're not that precise in electronic circuits anyway. But uh, we really have, a, have this total resistance with that uh, battery, so we're going to be down to something less than one amp to begin with, but let's keep the number simple. So this 10 ohm resistor is going to have some tolerance. Uh, when I first got into electronics, your typical resistor had a 20% tolerance. Those are kind of rare today. Uh, resistors today are usually 5% tolerance at worst, and we have precision resistors that are fairly inexpensive, but still there's going to be some tolerance. So let's say this is a 5% uh, tolerance. That could be, I'm not going to 
calculate the numbers. I can't do it in my head, but that's going to be either a little above or a little below 10 ohms. So that's going to skew everything anyway. So real world, all these numbers are simply not going to add up. But as uh, Purple Crimson asked, why don't we have a voltage drop here? We definitely do have a voltage drop there in the real world. But when we're doing these circuits, we assume that this battery has zero resistance. We assume this wire has zero resistance. We assume that's exactly 10 ohms. We assume that's exactly 10 volts. That way all of our numbers add up and we can learn all about Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws and everything adds up so we learn the concepts. Then we get to the real world. Well, I never have my students do exercises where they take batteries and resistors and measure the resistors in series and parallel and measure the currents and see how they add up because they won't. And that's confusing at this stage. Once we get into the real world and start working with real circuits, by that time we've learned that things are not precise. We're not looking for precise numbers. And if we look at a voltage and it's close enough, it's close enough. We don't worry about precision because we just don't work with precision once we get to the real world. And so if we start being precise, we end up with some pretty complicated numbers, which would be overwhelming to the new student and not useful anyway. So yes, we do have a voltage drop here. We just ignore it when we're doing the practice circuits. Real world, it's really there. Sometimes it matters. So we do have a voltage drop here. We just ignore it when we're doing the exercises on the board just to keep things simple. Now let's look at the other part of the question or the other question get some of this clutter out of here and that is when we get down here we have zero volts how can we have current flow with no voltage well why do we have zero volts there remember what a voltmeter tells us we have a red lead and a black lead I avoid calling them the positive and negative because you might put the black lead to a higher voltage and the red lead to a vol lower voltage what happens then we get a negative reading so I try to remember to refer to them as the red lead and the black lead and normally we put the red lead to the higher voltage the black lead to the lower voltage and we get a positive reading we swap them we swap them we get a negative reading so what's happening here well when we have zero volts there that means that we have decided to measure our voltage from a reference point which the most logical place to do that is the lowest voltage in the circuit so we anchor our black lead right there now what does the voltmeter tell us we have two leads and the voltmeter tells us the difference in voltage between those leads remember voltage is always a differential one voltage is meaningless unless we have another voltage to compare it to so what we have is our black lead here and now we're putting our red lead at different places around the circuit to see what the voltage is and so like here i'm going to see 10 volts here i'm going to see 9.9 .9 volts over here, I'm going to see 9.98 volts, assuming that that's really as much resistance as it is. And then I get down to here and I have zero volts. Why? Have I run out of voltage? Remember the mantra, zero volts is not an absence of voltage. Zero volts is merely telling me that my black lead and my red lead are at the same voltage and there's no difference remember the voltmeter measures the difference between two voltages if the red lead and the black lead are at the same voltage I'm going to read zero so I have the black lead here and the red lead there and it reads zero is that an absence of voltage no it isn't let's take the black lead and put it up here instead Now what am I going to read when I put the red lead here? Well, I have a difference of um, 10 volts. Let's just assume it's a perfect 10 volt battery. So I have a difference of 10 volts. The black lead is at the higher voltage. The red lead is at the lower voltage. By design, the meter gives me a negative reading of the voltage difference. The difference is 10 volts and black lead higher, red lead lower. I see a negative 10 volts. So now, I put my red lead here, it's minus 10 volts. There is not an absence of voltage, it's a negative voltage. Another way to look at this, I find that a lot of people get confused, even people that have experience and should have grasped this by now. How can I have current flow when I have no voltage here? Well, we've just shown that we don't have no voltage, we have 
definitely have a voltage there. It's minus 10 volts. It's a negative voltage. What does that mean? Well, before we move on, let's look at a concept where you would not have a problem with this. How about an air conditioning system or a refrigeration system? Here we have a motor and pump, some pipes that carry refrigerant, a restriction right here, and so the pump is, let's make that a P instead of an M. The pump is pumping the refrigerant in this direction. So what happens? Just like an electric circuit, I have a current flow going here. It hits a restriction, which is like a resistor. I get a backup of pressure behind it. So I have a high pressure on this side and a low pressure on this side because just like a resistor, I have a backup where there's a higher pressure where the fluid enters the, res the restriction or where it encounters the restriction. So a high pressure where the fluid encounters the restriction and a lower pressure where it leaves the restriction. Just like voltage. Remember, voltage is electrical pressure. So we have an equivalent of an electrical circuit. Pump pumping the fluid around, restriction, high pressure where the fluid enters the encounters the restriction, low pressure on the other side. And you can see this if you look at the air conditioning system on your car, you'll see there's two little measuring and filling ports. One uh, has a little H on it, the other one has an L on it, the high pressure port and the low pressure port. So you know which side which is on. And uh, what happens, of course, this isn't important to electronics, but this gets high under high pressure, it gets hot. We blow air across it, blow that heat away so it takes away energy. When it expands, it gets cold. We blow a fan across there to uh, cool off the other side, and that's how an air conditioner system works. But of course, it's like an electrical circuit. We have the pump, which is like what? The battery. It circulates the fluid around. These are like the wires. Restriction is like the resistor. We get the high pressure where the fluid enters low pressure where it exits. Now, we have a high pressure, low pressure, lower, 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 and it gets lower and lower. But in this case, we don't have a problem with the concept. Well, the pump sucks it in and pushes it back out, and therefore it keeps circulating. But if we go to the electric circuit, we end up, because of the way we've analyzed it and the way we've learned about it, we have a problem there because we don't look at a circuit usually as what it is, a circuit. This is a pump. This is the restriction. These are the wires. This pumps the electrical fluid in that direction, just like the pump in the air conditioning system. So the battery sucks the electricity in and pushes it back out. If we look at it that way, then we see the concept, oh, the battery's acting like a pump. But when we get in our minds, okay, we have to have voltage to get current flow. We have 10 volts, 9.9, 0. Oh my gosh, we have run out of voltage. We can't pump anymore. So if we look at it that way, we get confused because we're looking at, well, we have to have voltage to get the current to flow. But remember, 0 volts is not the absence of voltage. We actually have a suction here, a negative voltage that is sucking the electricity in. Now, of course, we're talking conventional current. In electron flow, it's really going the opposite direction, but I, like almost everybody in uh, academia and in the industry, pretend that electricity goes the opposite direction. It doesn't change the way things work. It just makes it easier to wrap our minds around what the circuit is doing. So we have the battery acting as a pump, pushing the electricity out one side and sucking it back in the other. So the fact that we have zero volts here is, is not actually the absence of voltage. It's just because we have both leads at the same point, and there's no difference between them. But we find that there's actually, if we look again here, there's our negative lead. Now our positive lead here, we say, oh, if I reverse the leads, I have minus 10 volts, assuming that's a 10-volt battery again. And, ah, oh, well, there's 10 volts of suction, sucking that right back in. Now we see the concept that this is a pump circulating electricity. It's not a fact that we have to have a voltage at each point to push the electricity through. Here's the impetus that keeps the electricity going. 
And it just came to mind there's another way to look at this, of course. Uh, we don't look at, oh, there's so much voltage here. Let's put a couple of resistors here. I think it'll help us with the concept. Okay, our usual way of looking at this is, okay, we have 10 volts here. We have 7 volts here. We have 0 volts here. So there's 10 volts here pushing the electricity this way. 7 volts are left to push it that way. And now we, oh, that's what confuses us. This voltage is not here because it's there to push the electricity. The voltage is there because the battery is pushing the electricity against the battery, just like the air conditioning system. We're pushing the fluid against the restriction. We get a backup of pressure behind the restriction. So we don't have pressure at the restriction because it's there pushing the current. The impetus is at the pump and the pressure is there because we're pushing it up against the restriction. So we don't have 10 volts here pushing the current. The 10 volts is over here pushing the current against there. It backs up. We get a higher pressure here because it's backing up behind it. Here we only get a backup of 7 volts, but we don't have 7 volts pushing the electricity through the, volt, the resistor. We have 7 volts because the battery is pushing the electricity through the resistor and we get a backup of voltage behind it. And down here, well now, the battery's sucking it back in. We don't need to have a voltage here to push the electricity. The battery is what causes all that impetus. So don't think of this as voltage pushing the electricity. Yeah, if we analyze it, we can look at it that way, but don't think of it that way because that's not what's really happening. So here's the impetus to push the electricity here. These are the consumers and we have a backup of 10 volts here. We have 7 volts left to back up over here. Now we've uh, reached the negative side of our battery and it's being sucked back in. So that's what happens there. So I hope that answered your questions. If it didn't, be sure to ask again. Any time you have questions, be sure to put them in the comments. If I have time to answer them, I'll certainly do it. Sometimes other people step in and answer the questions, which is good to have that communication on the comments of these videos. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.